Well, hello everybody. Welcome to week three of the spring Golf Town Virtual Golf Clinics hosted by me, Lisa Bluswick, nicknamed Lisa Longball. And I am so excited to be here because this is my favorite week of the year. This is Master's Week. Love Master's Week. I'm wearing my Master's Green in honor of Master's Week and even a cardigan in Arnold, uh, honor of Arnold Palmer, four-time Master's Champion. Oh, I have only been to the Masters once, but it was the most magnificent experience. I had a chance to go Monday to Sunday in 2006. I've got my three practice round badges there, and then the last badge is my Thursday to Sunday badge. I was able to get autographs from Sergio Garcia and Ernie Els and Retief Goosen and Larry Mize, and what an experience to be there. And I have to say, the azaleas are brighter than you can ever imagine. And, and the, the grass is just so lush and beautiful. It's truly like walking in a garden. And when you're there, you have to save up. Save up for the pro shop because believe me, you're going to spend your life savings, it seems like, in that darn pro shop. But the best purchase you can buy is this master's chair. So as a patron, when you go to the Masters, you can purchase a chair, and it's not very much. And when you purchase the chair, you get to place your chair anywhere you want on the golf course, and the chair cannot be touched. Once you put that chair down, no one can touch it for the day, and it's your chair to be put there. Now, there were so many Masters chairs, I ended up putting my name on the back, and then uh, you can also put your business card in there, but it's just the coolest experience to see this sea of green chairs, and uh, the food is at Depression Era pricing, like $2.50 for a sandwich. It was unbelievable. So if you ever get the chance, oh, bucket list stuff right there. You can always put your name in, in for uh, the ballots for the practice rounds and even tournament rounds. So I highly recommend throw your name in the draw. You never know. I met so many people who got in that way. So I hope everyone has an amazing master's week. I'd love to do a shout out. I see Tammy. I love that you noticed my master's green and Allison. Oh, thrilled you watched my videos last year and that you came back to get uh, some refreshers and some more great tips. And uh, oh, Melinda, it is bucket list worthy. I am telling you. And Marie Claude, hello, bonjour. So, so glad you've joined us from Quebec. All right. Well, today's clinic, I mixed it up a little bit. Uh, today's clinic, I'm going to cover alignment, pre-shot routine, and how to hit better irons and hybrids, how to stop the thin, skinny, scald shots. I was going to try to add the power moves this class, but I think it'll make it too long. So I'm going to do that next week when I also talk about how to stop the slice and how to stop the pull. So we're going to talk about alignment, pre-shot routine, and how to hit better irons and hybrids and stop those skinny, thin shots. All right, let's get started. So let's talk about uh, alignment. So last week, we covered the basics. I was so thrilled. We had over 130 35,000 people who watched the video. I loved all the comments. Please do that. Thanks everyone for tagging friends, tagging friends in the chat that you think could use some of the, 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 the tips and help uh, out there. So that's fantastic. So last week we talked about the warm up. So many people were thrilled to add the warm up to the routine and have already seen great results. Then we talked about grip posture and ball position. Now the fourth part, whenever you're getting ready to hit a golf ball, you want to focus on four things before you even hit the golf ball. And that is grip, posture, ball position, and now we're going to do alignment. So those four things are things you need to do every time before you hit a golf ball. So let's talk about alignment. So alignment is so important. We talked about posture in a four-step process. As you know, I'm a big fan of simple swing thoughts and I'm a big fan of creating a routine. How do we give you a step-by-step -step process to make golf easier and so that you can be consistent and hit it longer? So step number one, when you're aligning, you always pick your target from behind the ball. So I'm going to throw my ball here on... Uh, on my piece of turf and you always pick your target from behind the ball. This is something I see golfers do incorrectly. I can fix you many of you today with that alone. What I see a lot of golfers do is when they're setting up to their target, I see them kind of standing behind beside their ball. They're looking down at the flag. I see them even put the, the club on their hips. I see them do a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of this till they get it right. I've even seen it across the chest a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, now I'm facing the target. If you're doing that, stop. That's a terrible way to align because that is not, it's not going to be your feet that hit the golf ball or the shoulder. It's going to be your club face. So we need to pick that target from behind the golf ball. So step number one in proper alignment, always pick your target from behind the golf ball. That's step number one. Step number two, you need to pick a very specific target. I often talk to people when they're at the range 
and they're sitting there getting ready at the range and they scrape a ball, you know, they make a swing, you know, scrape another ball before the ball's even landed. They're making another swing and then again, they're scraping it from the tree again before it's even landed. And I'll say to them, hey, where's your target? And they'll, they'll look at me like I have three heads and they'll be like, middle of the fairway, Lisa, uh, you know, or middle of the driving range, should I say. And, and here's the problem. You can't just pick the middle of the driving range because the middle of the driving range could be 20, 30 yards wide. And as we all know, when we need to hit a fairway, we don't get necessarily 20, 30 yards to do that. So you want to pick a very specific target. And again, there's a great swing thought out there. And that is, uh, I want you to uh, pick a small target. So pick a small target so that you can uh, aim small, miss small. Great saying. Aim small, miss small. While we're here, I just want to say hello to Denise. Oh, thrilled that you're enjoying the golf tips from Newcastle, Ontario. Ontario, Lori, thanks so much for joining us. And Michelle Wong, hello, hello, thanks so much. So as we were just continuing, we're going through our alignment. Number one, you always pick the ball from behind the target. Number two, you need to pick a very specific target. Even if you're on the driving range, I want you to practice like you play. Pick a very specific target. And uh, of course, when you're on the driving range, it's easy. There's often like a 100-yard marker, a 200-yard marker, so you can easily pick a specific target. When you're playing golf, perhaps a, a par four or a, a wide open par five, it's harder to pick a target because there's not markers in the middle of those fairways. So what I want you to do when you're playing golf and you're about to hit your shot and you're picking a target, pick a specific target. So perhaps your target is in line with the chimney uh, on, of a house that's behind the green. Perfect, that's your target. Now, obviously you're not gonna hit the chimney, but that's the line I want you to pick. Maybe if you're at the tee box, you can see a, a sand trap that's way past where you're gonna hit it, but that edge of the sand trap is exactly in line with where you want your ball, perfect. Edge of the sand trap is your line, but you need to pick a very specific line. That's step number two. Step number three in alignment, what I need you to do is I want you to use your dominant eye when you pick that specific target. So what is the dominant eye? So all of you who are watching right now, I want you to do this live with me. Put down your kitchen utensils if you're making dinner, or putting dishes away, if you're in the basement, or if you're in your bedroom, wherever you are, put your stuff down and you're going to do something with me. We're going to do a dominant eye drill. What I want you to do is to be standing up and I want you to look across your room to the furthest point across your room, something in the corner. And it could be a, it could be a light, it could be a picture frame, something on the other side of the room. What I want you to do is I want you to stretch your arms out. Now, I don't want to see little baby arms here, little T-Rex arms or alligator arms. I want to see stretched out arms. What I want to see you do is I want you to put your thumbs together and your index fingers together to make a triangle. And with that triangle, what I want you to do is you're going to face that triangle at your object, whether it's the picture frame or the pot light or whatever it may be. And I want you to center it with both eyes open. So center it with both eyes open. Okay. So that you can have both eyes open. You're picking that target. Now I want you to close your left eye, open it, close your right eye, open it. And on one of them, I guarantee you that object moved almost right out from the middle of your triangle. Think about that. So what you just did was you figured out which is your dominant eye. We all have a dominant eye, whether it be our left eye or our right eye, we all have a dominant, or most of us, I would say, have a dominant eye. And so for you, if your object shifted, think about that. You could be missing your fairway by 30 yards if you're picking your target with both eyes open. So I want you to, for now on, pick your target with your dominant eye. And your dominant eye is the one that keeps your object in the center of the triangle when you have only that one eye open. So that's your dominant eye. That's what you're going to use to pick your target. So Val, great. I'm so appreciative that you will like that advice. And Miranda, thrilled that you like the tips. And Patricia Ann from Winnipeg, thank Thank you so much. Okay, so step number one, we pick our target always from behind the golf ball. Step number two, pick a very specific target. If you're at the driving range, perhaps it's a yardage marker. If you're on the at a, on playing golf, maybe it's the chimney, maybe it's the edge of the trap. And then what you're going to do for step number three, what you're going to stand behind that ball. I'm going to bring my ball back in here. You're going to stand behind your ball. You're going to have your specific target. You're going to use your, only your dominant eye is open. And what I want you to do is stand with your club at about waist height. So not chest height, but about waist height. And if you're right behind your ball, I want you to point your club exactly at your target. So whether that be the chimney, the edge of the fairway, the yardage marker. And as you look down the shaft, it should actually split your ball in half. If you've pointed your club at your uh, specific target with your dominant eye. And you're looking down your shaft and it's splitting your ball in half. 
Now what I want you to find is an intermediate target. So that intermediate target is something that's going to be one foot to two feet in front of your golf ball. So it could be an old broken tee, it could be an old divot, a weird scuffed piece of grass, but something that's in the line of your club face and that target that's about a foot or two feet away. Jack Nicklaus was a huge fan of the intermediate target. Why? Because what I was saying earlier, the most important thing that you need to lean up, to, to line up, isn't your hips, isn't your shoulders, it's your club face. This is the most important thing to line up. And it's a much easier to line this club face up to something that's one foot or two feet in front of your golf ball versus something that's 100 yards away, 175 yards away. So that's where the intermediate target comes in very, very handy. So then the step number four is line up your club face to that intermediate target. And when I say line up your club face, what I'm looking for is what we call a square club face. And that means it's pointed directly at uh, the, the ball or the target. This would be a closed club face and this is an open club face. You want a square club face. Now, for any of the ladies who are on the uh, uh, clinic right now, you are a little bit lucky here because a lot, if not all of women's golf clubs comes with a special extra alignment tool. Let me show you. This is a, a Callaway Reva iron. So this is a, a, an iron that's designed specifically for women. And almost all women's clubs have this. Some men's clubs have this. And some juniors clubs uh, have this as well too. What you're going to notice, and you may never have noticed this before, there are two white lines, sometimes one, sometimes two, on the bottom of your club face. Now you may have thought that this was just decorative. Not the case at all. These are extra helpers to help you align your club face. So it's much easier to see if your club face is closed or open if you're looking at those white lines. Now, here's a little word of a white advice, a little word to the wise. Guess what? You can't see those white lines if they're filled with mud and dirt and rocks. So make sure you've got to make sure you clean your grooves. So this is a great tip for all golfers out there, you, especially if you want to look pro. I'm a big fan of fake it till you make it. It's okay if you can't break 100 to save your life. This is a great tip. Every one of you should have a towel. Every one of you should have a towel on your golf bag and you should wet that towel before your round and after you make a, a after you make a swing, you should just do a quick wipe of your golf club to clean the grooves. Here we're spending thousands of dollars on golf equipment, but if your grooves aren't clean, you're wasting your money. You're throwing it out the window. This is what creates spin and helps you hit your golf ball properly. So again, those little white lines, you can't see them if they're not clean. So our steps for our alignment process is we always want to pick our target from behind the golf ball. We want to pick a very specific target. We want to use our dominant eye so that we can pick an intermediate target. So we stand behind that golf ball, uh, face our golf club at the intermediate target, look for something one foot to two feet in front of the golf ball. Then we're going to line our club face up to that intermediate target. So that little piece of broken tee or weird piece of grass. So all I care about is lining my club face up to that intermediate target. Oops, sorry. I'm out of the picture there. Sorry, everybody. Whoop, let's do that again. So all I care about is getting my club face lined up to that intermediate target and then I set up. Now don't forget, you need to use your ball position tip here. So for any of you, if this is your first video and you missed my last video, please go back to the Golf Town Facebook page or the Golf Town YouTube channel to watch it. I gave an outstanding tip about ball position. So reminder, that's feet together, move the lead foot or the foot closest to the fairway uh, about the width of a club head and then move your back foot to comfort and then you've lined up that club face to your, uh, to your intermediate target and trust it and go. And because you've done that and because you've aligned that properly now, if you don't hit your ball at target, if it goes left of the target or right of the target, you know it's something to do with your golf swing. So you can help fix that, which is absolutely fantastic. I just want to say hello. I see Diane and Jim have joined us from Ottawa. So glad you enjoyed the tips. Nicole, thank you so much. And she's tagging friends who she knows needs to watch us. What a great friend you are. And uh, Ruth May, watching from Queensland, Australia. G'day, mate. That's wonderful. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, my, my uh, last tip with our alignment here is, uh, here's one little tip. My, my husband will say to me sometimes, I'll be all lined up getting ready to hit my uh, golf shot and I'm all ready to go and he'll go, Lisa, 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 wait, wait. I'm like, what, what? And he said, you're not lined up to your target. And I'm like, what do you mean? And what he'll often do is he'll grab uh, his club and he'll throw it down on my feet line. And he'll say, look, look at your feet line. That's nowhere near your target. So if I would go behind my golf club and look, I'd be like, oh goodness, you're right. And I would, I would adjust that. 
Again, that's exactly opposite to how you do that. Your feet are not hitting this golf ball. Your club face is. So pe people will ask me all the time, well, don't you have to line up your shoulders and, and your hips and, and your feet? Yes, but that line is parallel to your target line. This is the most important line. Let me show you with those alignment rods. We talked about this in week one of training aids. So here's my target line and my foot line so, and, and hips and shoulders, yes, they are going to be parallel to my target line, but they're not facing my target line. Your feet should not be faced at your target. So it should be that you have your club face at your target and your foot line is parallel to that. That's really important. Do not aim your feet or shoulders at the target. It should be your club face and then your feet and shoulders are parallel to that. So if you do that, your alignment is gonna be awesome. Now everything we just covered, that's basically a pre-shot routine. So any of you out there who struggle with first tee jitters or uh, you find that you don't have a lot of consistency, develop your own pre-shot routine. And again, watch the masters this week, watch the players, especially if you can watch them from the beginning of their shot, they will do the exact same thing every time. So again, watch to see what that pre-shot routine looks like. For me, if you get nervous, you're playing a fancy golf course or playing with people you don't know, you get paired with a twosome you don't know, focus on your pre-shot routine. So all I care about is I get behind my ball, I get pick my target, I look for my intermediate target with my dominant eye, I line my club face up to that target, I set my feet up, I do my move my first foot, move my front foot, move my back foot, take my deep breath out, and then I pull the trigger. So again, make sure you have a pre-shot routine. All right, so those are our alignment tips today. So I think those are fantastic. The next thing we're gonna talk about is how to hit fantastic irons and hybrids. And again, I just wanna do a shout out to Francine. I see that you have joined us. Hello, hello, so glad. Kathy, so thrilled you enjoyed the alignment tip. Thank you so much. Okay, so let's get to part two of the, of the lesson today. And that is how do we hit good irons and, and hybrid shots? Now, here's the thing I noticed the most. We've talked about the four things we do every time we're about to hit a golf shot, and that is uh, grip, posture, ball position, and alignment. Those are the four things you need to worry about. Now it's time to hit a golf ball. Well, when you go to the driving range, before you even get to hit a golf ball, I am going to ask you, I want you to pull out one club from your bag first. The club I want you to pull out, wedge. The worst thing I see, I often see people saddle up beside me on the driving range. What's the first club they pull out of their bag? If you said driver, you'd be correct. And that's the last club you should hit. That's the longest club in your bag with the least amount of loft. It's the last club you should hit. The first club you should be pulling out of your bag is a wedge, maybe a pitching wedge. And when you go to hit that club and you're working on those four things of grip, posture, uh, ball position and alignment, I don't even want you to have a golf ball. All I want you to do, I want you to make five swings that the only thing you focus on is brushing the grass. I want you to make five swings where all you do is brush the grass. This is huge. Out of all six clinics that you're going to hear me give uh, over our spring clinics here, this to me would probably be one of the top one or two tips that I'm going to give you for all six weeks. You need to brush the grass, brush the grass, brush the grass. And this is so important. So if your iron striking isn't very good, my guess is you don't do a great job of brushing the grass. So if you hit a poor shot, I want you to take a practice swing and I guarantee you, your practice swing probably looks like this. Now that's a darn looking golf, good looking golf swing there. But guess what? I didn't brush the grass. And if I didn't brush the grass, that means that that ball is gonna travel about a foot off the ground, maybe a little bit higher, maybe go 110, 120 yards. Why? Because I didn't brush the grass. If you don't brush the grass, you can't get underneath that golf ball. You can't use the loft on your golf club. You have to brush the grass. So again, when you get to that driving range, first thing you should be doing with your wedge, five, brushing the grass. Now. What when you don't brush the grass because I was just with my son this weekend at the driving range and I said okay take a practice swing he had a great swing but he didn't brush the grass and he did it three or four times he's like mom I can't brush the grass well let me give you a story my husband and I often are playing golf and we get paired maybe with another couple and sometimes what I'll see is I'll see perhaps the lady uh, in the group she'll go to make her golf swing and she's got a fantastic golf swing she goes to make her golf swing and it looks something like this and, and she goes and, and it kind of hits a worm burner scully shot, you know, along, along, along the grass. 
And often her husband will say, oh, sweetheart, you lifted your head. And she's thinking to herself, gosh, I, I didn't think I lifted my head. Well, I, I, okay, I guess I lifted my head. So she goes back to hit her next shot. And this time she is not going to lift her head. So this time she has her head down. No way she's going to lift it. She goes to hit her next shot. And again, she cold tops it. It dribbles off the tee. And her husband said, sweetie, you lifted your head again. And she's like, I didn't lift my head. It was glued to my chest. And the divorce open starts. You do not want the divorce open. How do you avoid the divorce open? Never tell anyone that they lifted their head. That is one of the worst pieces of advice I have ever heard in golf. She didn't lift her head. What happened is she came out of her posture. So she either, she either straightened her legs or what I see most often than not, lifted her torso. Now, if you look, it looks like my head is lifting. So bless the, bless the husband's heart. He was trying to help her. But when you give a golfer poor advice, it actually can make things worse. So that's terrible advice. Never say those words again. So what happens is when you come out of your posture, and again, think about it. Let's say you lift your torso just one inch, just one inch. Well, now you're hitting halfway up the golf ball. Let's say you lift your torso an inch and a half. Well, now you're hitting the forehead of the golf ball. That's not a very big lift, but you're going to have terrible contact. So again, you have, if I were outside right now, if I were outside, I could show you, I could hit a six iron right here and I'd have my head up like this. I'd have my head up like this and I can make a, a shot. I can make a shot and I guarantee I could hit it 170 yards and my head's like this. Why? Because it has nothing to do with lifting your head. You came out of your posture. So any, and this is men and women. Anytime you hit that low, skinny, skulky shot, or you hear that click when you hit the golf ball, you know you came out of your posture, even if just a little bit. So anytime you hear that click, you came out of your posture. So anytime that happens to me, the next time I make my golf swing, the only thing I'm concentrating on is brushing the grass. Now, how do we help? If you're someone that constantly is lifting your torso, how do you stop that? Here's my tip for you. I want you to initiate your backswing with your lead shoulder. So for my right-handed golfers, that's your left shoulder. And for my lefties, it's your right. I'm sorry that my camera flips me. I apologize that my camera flips me. But if you start your backswing, if you start your backswing with your lead shoulder, it keeps your chest level. If you start with your arms, look how your chest comes up. So if you start your backswing with your arms, now you're already at a posture and good luck brushing the grass. Start your backswing with your lead shoulder. That will help you keep your chest level. So anyone who struggles with that, there's your tip right there. Now, we talked about in ball position, you want, the reason I'm giving you the new ball position that my coach Paul Horton gave me is that we want to hit the golf ball. We want to have ball first contact. Remember, for proper iron striking, hybrid striking, and actually fairway wood striking too, you want to hit down on the ball. You want to trap the ball, compress the ball. You want to smush it into the ground. That's how you properly do it. Driver is different. Driver is the only club you want to hit that ball on the upswing. Every other golf club, you're hitting down on it, trapping it, compressing it. So that's why in the ball position, remember, uh, the lowest part the lowest part of your swing of, by, by biomechanics is at your shoulder joint. So why not start your ball just behind the shoulder joint so you hit the ball first contact and then ground the club out the divot should always be after the ball so if you're someone struggling with um you know being able to brush the grass and here's the thing women say to me oh lisa i don't want to brush the grass i don't want to hurt my wrists and and hey look i'm not looking for a beaver pelt i'm not looking for the hudson bay company to come after you with just big beaver pelt just take a little brush of the grass a little bacon strip remember we're canadians we love bacon i don't take a massive huge pelt out of the ground every time like the pj tour players do but you bet i brush the grass just a little skinny bacon strip is all you need so again if you're struggling making that bacon strip if you're struggling brushing that grass a great little tip i want you to get a tee unfortunately you're going to need grass so some of you i already know have driving ranges that are operational so that's great um or again you can try it in a park across the street with foam balls or whatever else but what you want to do is you want to put um, your tee in the ground, 
put your ball beside the tee. What I want you to do is you're going to hit the ball. You're going to hit the ball and the divot should be on that side of the tee. If your divot isn't on that side of the tee, you know you're not hitting down on it, compressing it, trapping it. Another little drill you can do, you can put the ball on the grass and put the, little, the, the tee in front of the ball. Maybe just have about an inch, about an inch sticking out of the grass, even a little bit less and put that about two inches in front of your ball, what I want you to do is hit the golf ball. If you do a good job trapping it, compressing it, hit down on it, you'll knock that tee right out of the ground. So those are two little drills if you're not good at striking your irons or hybrids that, that, that will help. Now, hybrids, I'm gonna teach you that same thing. And I just wanna say hello to Jacqueline. You often hit the ball going down instead of going up. Okay, th that's great. So now we, that turning of that lead shoulder is gonna help you a ton. Stephanie, hello from Vaughn, Ontario. I'm thrilled that you're enjoying the videos. And Carol Ann, so thrilled that you love the tips. Thanks everyone for all your wonderful comments. If I don't get to your comment, I will go back and then as the next few days go by, I will respond to every single comment. So thank you everyone for your comments. But I wanna do a hybrid next. So hybrid, here we go. For hybrid, many people say, Lisa, I heard this was the Miracle Club. I heard if I get a hybrid, I'm gonna hit it amazing. And, and, and here's the thing. Then they say, I buy it and I hit it like a donkey. Why do I hit my hybrid like a donkey? Well, first of all, what is a hybrid? So a hybrid is actually, it's a fantastic club. Gary Player has actually said that he feels this is one of the best inventions in the last 20 years in golf. Why? Because it makes your longer iron, so your three iron, your four iron, your five iron, easier to hit. So a three hybrid would ballpark replace your three iron, four hybrid, four iron, five a hybrid, five iron, so on and so forth. And with that bulk to the background, a lot of people see that bulk and then they kind of want to hit it like a driver. They kind of want to hit up on it or sweep it a little bit. And that's where people run into trouble with their hybrid. If you aren't hitting your hybrid well, I guarantee that you're not doing a great job hitting down on it, trapping it, compressing it. So if you're someone that struggles with your hybrid, those two drills I just showed you, do a couple of those with your iron to start with, and then I want you to go to hybrid, and the only swing thought I want you to have, hit down on it, trap it, compress the ball, and I guarantee it will start, start going up. When we go to chipping, I'm also gonna show you some fantastic ways that you can use your hybrid. So that's really awesome. So I just wanna say hello, I see Sylvie has joined us from Oshawa, she so loves the tips and my energy, thank you so much, and Mariana, Oh, she went golfing today at Royal Ashburn. Took a huge divot behind the ball in the fairway. Whoops, that's right. When the divot is behind the ball, when you hit the big ball first before the little ball, it doesn't go very far. So again, that could be that arms lifting thing versus the turning. So we're gonna talk about that next week. So this week, I hope these tips were super helpful for you. Again, we covered uh, 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 the alignment, the four steps to proper alignment, which is great. We talked about how to hit uh, a better irons and better fairway shots. If you're someone who hits it skinny or thin, you've probably, you're probably coming out of your posture. So again, you're not lifting your head. You've come out of your posture. So you straightened your legs or lifted your torso. So start with that lead shoulder. Keep that chest level. Now, one more little, little note here. People say to me, okay, Lisa, let's say I take a practice swing and I miss, and I miss brushing the grass. Can I take another practice swing when I'm playing golf? Okay, sure. Be fast about it. You can take a second practice swing because you, that's the whole purpose of a practice swing, to be honest with you, is to brush the grass. And so it, what do people say to me? Well, what if I miss my, my, the brushing the grass on my second practice swing? Can I take a third? No, you can't take a third practice swing. Holy cow, you'll be out there for six hours. Pace to play, people. So hope and pray. If you miss the second time, you just hope and pray. You want to keep the pace of play. I'm a big fan of practice swings, but we got to keep the pace of play. We've got to be cognizant of all the other golfers around us. And, and you can do your practice swing while someone is setting up to do their shot so that you can keep that pace of play going. So so uh, do, do a practice swing. I'm a huge fan of a practice swing because that's where you brush the grass. Now, here's one more tip for contact is you always want to brush what the ball is sitting on. So if the ball is sitting on grass, you want to brush the grass. If the ball is sitting on a tee, such as driver, uh, you want to brush that tee. And if the ball is sitting on sand in a greenside bunker, not a fairway bunker, but a greenside bunker, you better brush that sand because otherwise that ball is going to go skyrocketing out to the other side. So there's a great swing thought for you. Always brush what the ball is sitting on. 
Brush the grass, brush the grass, brush the grass, but always brush what the ball is sitting on. I hope these tips have helped you. So next week, we are going to cover power. Next week is all about power and speed. I'm going to help you hit, learn how to hit every club in your bag longer uh, and straighter. I'm going to teach you how to stop pulls and hooks and how to stop slices. So we're going to learn how to do that. And we're going to do some extra driver tips. So next class is all about adding distance and speed and power to your whole game. So that's next Tuesday. So you don't want to miss that. So if you want to connect with me, please feel free to uh, uh, join me on social media. My Twitter account is at Lisa Longball. On Instagram, I'm at Lisa Longball. And I've got a Facebook page, Lisa Longball. So we'd love to see you there. If you've missed any of the Golf Town videos, please follow Golf Town and go back uh, on the Golf Town Facebook page. They will be staying there under videos or you can go to the Golf Town YouTube page. As soon as this video is done, we will be posting up there. And I'm thrilled to hear people re-watching the video and taking notes and adding that uh, in their bag. That is fantastic. So I can't wait to see all of you next week. Liz, so thrilled that you've enjoyed it. Kim, you're so welcome. June, distance. Don't miss me next Tuesday. You're going to want to be there. And John from Manitoba, thank you everybody so much for joining me. Don't miss me next Tuesday. Enjoy Masters Weekend. I, I truly hope you have a magical experience this weekend and maybe maybe one day you'll get to walk those ferries of Augusta National. Thanks very much, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye.